Today we are going to learn the 14 principle of administrative management given by Henry Fayol. Before that let's look into who was Henry. Henry Fayol is also known as the father of modern management theory gave rise to a new perception of the concept of management. He introduced a general theory that can be applied to all levels of management and every department. This fall theory is practiced by the managers to organize and regulate the internal activities of an organization. He concentrated on accomplishing managerial efficiency. So what were the basic principles which he introduced, giving rise to a new perception of the concept of management? Let me now take you through this principle one by one in detail. So, first of all, is a division of work. 1. Division of work. This principle explains that work is divided into different kinds such as technical, financial, commercial, accounting, and managerial. What he believed was that segregating work in the workforce, workplace amongst the workers will enhance the quality of work, product. He also added that the division of work improves the productivity, efficiency, accuracy, and speed of the workers. Now, this principle is going to be beneficial for both the managerial as well as technical work. It also explains the specific work to be done. It can be divided into know a person's workers as per their skills and interest. This will increase efficiency and additionally will save time. Let now move to the next principle, what is authority? So authorities are the right to make decisions. It is necessary to get the things done appropriately from subordinates. Authorities and responsibility go hand in hand, for example if a manager is given the authority that he should make his subordinates do a particular work then it also becomes his responsibility that he also supervises properly, whether the subordinates can do the task efficiently. Authority facilitate the management to work efficiently and responsibility make them responsible for the work done under guidance or leadership. The third principle which is another important one is discipline. According to this principle, an organization must follow discipline. Employees must obey and respect the rules that govern the organization. As seen earlier, in the previous principle that a supervisor has the right, authority to assign work, task to the subordinates, it doesn't mean that he shall disobey as per his choice, but to abide by some rules and respect each other for the smooth running of the organization. Without this principle, no organization goals can be achieved. It is the core value of the organization. To maintain good discipline in an organization, there is a need for good supervision at all levels, a clear understanding between management and workers, and rational use of power and penalties. The next principle is the unity of command. It means, each member of an organization should receive orders from only one supervisor. Thus it means there should be just one person who is accountable to give instructions, assign tasks. There is a very obvious reason for it, that if in case, the members of the organization receive an order from multiple supervisors, they may get confused and may not complete the task on time which thereby begins a conflict of interest. Let now get into understanding the next principle which is the unity of direction. This principle states that there should be one head and one plan in every organization. Based on the previous principle, where there should be one single person, supervise who will give instructions. Additionally, there should be one plan which should be followed meaning unidirectional as given by the managers. In other words, it should be one direction that needs to be followed wherein employees will move to achieve a particular objective. It is difficult slash impractical to achieve the goal if the employee got pulled into multiple directions. So one goal, motive, thus making work easier and setting the goal easily. The next to one subordination of interest to the general interest. According to this principle the interest of an individual must be given less importance than the interest of the organization. Thus Fayol emphasized aligning individuals' personal goals to organizational goals. This means that a company should work unitedly toward the interest of a company rather than personal interest, thus referring to the whole chain of command in a company. This can be illustrated from an example like in a football match, players focus on winning a match as a team rather than scoring individual goals. 
the next principle which is remuneration. According to this principle the interest of an individual must be given less importance, than the interest of the organization. Thus Fayel emphasized aligning individuals' personal goals to organizational, employees must be given fair remuneration, wages salary to keep them satisfied financially as well as retain them for a long period within the organization. This provision for wages must be or could be in the form of salary as a monetary remuneration, as it tax as a motivation factor. While deciding the monetary remuneration there should be many factors which should be considered namely colon skill, expertise, knowledge, tenure, cost of living, market trend, profitabilities of the organization, etc. Along with this monetary remuneration, which is in the form of salary, it is also important to provide non-monetary remuneration, which will also be beneficial acting as a motivational factor. It should also be noted that both of them should be decided and made according to individual efforts they made. They all mentioned that degree of centralization should be decided to make the optimum utilization of employee skills. There should be a proper balance between centralization and decentralization in the organization. In centralization, all decisions are taken by top management and if this authority is given to a lower department then it is termed decentralization. It should be precisely decided which decision should be taken by whom. Henry Fayol stressed the point that there should be a balance between the hierarchy and division of power. The next principle is a scale of chain. Scale of chain means the hierarchy of authority from the top level of the lower level for communication. In simple terms, the top level and the chain from top to bottom in management makes the decisions and the lower level follows the decisions which may take some time and that is called a scale of chain. It, therefore, means Fayol highlights that the hierarchy steps should be from the top to the lowest. It is necessary so that employee knows their immediate senior also they should be able to contact if needed. Management must follow the principle of the right place for everything and every man. The next principle is equality. This principle means fair treatment of all employees and that management must follow the principle of the right place for everything and every man, without discrimination. In other words, management should be fair and friendly to the subordinates thus. When deciding monetary terms employees must not be discriminated against. Different departments having the same level of employees must be given the same remuneration to avoid conflicts. The next principle is order. The next principle states that order is required for efficient coordination of all the elements of the organization. That means, a company must maintain a well-defined work order to have a favorable work culture. This principle is based on a place for everything and everything in its place example human resources and materials should be at the right time and right place which assists in the smooth working of the organization. The next principle is the stability of tenure of personnel. Management must strive to stabilize the tenure of employees by providing them job security. At the time of recruitment of employees their management should assure them about the stability of tenure or job security based on the point that employees must not have a feeling of insecurity regarding their job, otherwise, it may contribute to the inefficiency in work. The management thus must offer job security to their employee. The next principle is initiative. All states that management must provide freedom to employees so that they can carry out orders effectively. It refers to volunteering to the work innovatively. Thus employees must have the right to express new ideas this makes the employee feel interested and attached to the organization. This probably may bring into that idea that may be very profitable for the organization. Thus management should support and encourage the employees to take initiatives in the organization. The last but not least is esprit de corps. If all the employees are working as a union and with mutual trust the difficulties can be solved quickly. This principle esprit de corps means the union is strength. We know that for an organization to work efficiently it needs a group activity and then the human resource is a valuable asset of an organization. For example, if all employees work with a mutual trust there any difficulty can be overcome. Thus the manager should ensure that their employee has team spirit. 
Thus through this, we could understand the 14 principles of administrative management by Henry Fayol. Thank you for watching this video. Tell us more about the topic you would want to learn in the comment section.